Hello and welcome to our channel, where we bring you the latest and most important news and analysis from India and around the world. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most ambitious and controversial laws in India's history, the National Food Security Act, 2013, or NFSA for short. This act aims to provide subsidized food grains to almost two-thirds of India's population and to ensure that no one goes hungry in the world's largest democracy. But how does it work, what are its benefits, and what are the challenges in implementing it? Stay tuned to find out, what is NFSA? NFSA is an act of parliament that was passed on July 5, 2013, and came into force on September 12, 2013. It is also known as the Right to Food Act, as it gives legal entitlement to food and nutrition security to the people of India. NFSA covers two categories of beneficiaries, Priority Households PHH, and Antiodea Anayojana AAY, households. PHH are those who are identified as poor and vulnerable by the state governments, and AAY are those who are the poorest of the poor. PHH are entitled to 5 kg of food grains per person per month, and AAY are entitled to 35 kg of food grains per household per month. The food grains are provided at subsidized prices of 3 rupees per kilogram for rice, 2 rupees per kilogram for wheat, and 1 rupee per kilogram for coarse grains. NFSA also includes special provisions for pregnant women, lactating mothers, and children up to 14 years of age. They are entitled to receive free meals through the Integrated Child Development Services ICDS, and the Midday Meal MDM, schemes. Pregnant women and lactating mothers are also entitled to receive a cash maternity benefit of 6,000 rupees. NFSA is implemented through the Targeted Public Distribution System TPDS, which is a network of fair price shops that distribute food grains to the beneficiaries. The central government procures, allocates, and transports the food grains to the state governments, who are responsible for identifying the beneficiaries, issuing ration cards, and distributing the food grains through the fair price shops. What are the benefits of NFSA? NFSA is a landmark legislation that aims to address the problem of hunger and malnutrition in India, which affects millions of people, especially women and children. According to the Global Hunger Index 2023, India ranks 94th out of 107 countries, with a score of 28.7, which indicates a serious level of hunger. NFSA seeks to improve the food security and nutritional status of the people by providing them with adequate and affordable food grains. NFSA also empowers women and promotes gender equality, as it mandates that the eldest woman of the household, who is 18 years or above, should be the head of the household for the purpose of issuing ration cards. This gives women more control over the household food consumption and expenditure, and also enhances their social status and dignity. NFSA also supports the farmers and the agricultural sector, as it ensures a stable and remunerative market for their produce. The Act links the prices of the food grains to the minimum support price MSP, which is the guaranteed price that the government pays to the farmers for their crops. This protects the farmers from the fluctuations and uncertainties of the market, and also incentivizes them to produce more food grains. What are the challenges in implementing NFSA? NFSA is a massive and complex undertaking that involves multiple stakeholders and multiple levels of governance. It faces several challenges and issues in its design and implementation, such as coverage and identification. One of the key challenges is to determine the coverage and identification of the beneficiaries under NFSA. The Act covers up to 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population based on the 2011-12 consumption survey data. However, this data is outdated and does not reflect the current socioeconomic realities of the people. Moreover, the identification of the beneficiaries is done by the state governments, who use different criteria and methods, leading to errors of inclusion and exclusion. Some people who are eligible may be left out, while some people who are ineligible may be included, this affects the efficiency and equity of the Act, and also increases the fiscal burden on the government. Procurement and Storage 
Another challenge is to procure and store the required quantity and quality of food grains for NFSA. The Act requires the central government to procure about 60 million tons of food grains per year, which is about 40% of the total food grain production in the country. This poses a huge logistical and financial challenge, as the government has to procure the food grains from the farmers at MSP and store them in adequate and safe warehouses. However, the government faces a shortage of storage capacity and also suffers from losses due to wastage, spoilage, and pilferage of the food grains. According to a report by the Comptroller and Auditor General of India CAG, in 2017, about 4.72 lakh tons of food grains worth 1,701 rupees crore were damaged in the central warehouses between 2011 and 2016. Distribution and Delivery The final challenge is to distribute and deliver the food grains to the beneficiaries through the TPDS. The Act requires the state governments to ensure that the food grains reach the fair price shops and that the beneficiaries receive their entitlements without any leakage or diversion. However, the TPDS suffers from several problems such as corruption, mismanagement, inefficiency, and lack of transparency and accountability. There are instances of fake and duplicate ration cards, diversion and black marketing of food grains, underweighing and overcharging of food grains, and denial and delay of food grains to the beneficiaries. According to a report by the Niti Aayog in 2016, about 46.7% of the food grains allocated for TPDS did not reach the intended beneficiaries. Ways Forward and Suggestions Some of the possible ways forward and suggestions to overcome the challenges and limitations of the NFSA 2013 are Updating and Verifying the Beneficiary List The beneficiary list should be updated and verified regularly, based on the latest and reliable data sources, such as the National Family Health Survey (NFHS), the National Sample Survey (NSS), and the Adhar Biometric Identification System. The criteria for inclusion and exclusion should be clearly defined and communicated to the public, and the process should be transparent, participatory, and accountable. The beneficiaries should also have the option to opt out of the scheme if they do not need or want the subsidized food grains. Improving the procurement and storage of food grains. The procurement and storage of food grains should be improved by strengthening the existing mechanisms, such as the Minimum Support Price (MSP), the Food Corporation of India (FCI), and the Central and State Warehousing Corporations (CWC) and SWC. The procurement should be decentralized and diversified, involving more local and small farmers, especially women and marginalized groups, and more crops, such as pulses, oilseeds, and millets. The storage should be modernized and expanded, using scientific and technological innovations, such as silos, cold storages, and solar dryers, and ensuring proper hygiene and sanitation standards. The storage should also be decentralized and localized, reducing the transportation and distribution costs and losses. Reforming and strengthening the TPDS The TPDS should be reformed and strengthened by adopting the best practices and innovations from various states and union territories, such as the One Nation One Ration Card ANORC, scheme, which allows the beneficiaries to access their entitlements from any fair price shop in the country, the Adhar-based biometric authentication system, which reduces the scope of fraud and duplication, the online monitoring and tracking system, which enhances the transparency and accountability of the TPDS, and the doorstep delivery and direct benefit transfer, DBT, system, which improves the convenience and choice of the beneficiaries. The TPDS should also involve more community participation and social audit, and provide more grievance redressal and feedback mechanisms for the beneficiaries. Enhancing the nutritional adequacy and diversity of the food basket. The nutritional adequacy and diversity of the food basket should be enhanced by including more food items, such as pulses, oil, sugar, salt, fruits, and vegetables, in the NFSA, and providing them at subsidized or free rates to the beneficiaries, especially the pregnant women, lactating mothers, and children. The NFSA should also promote the consumption of fortified food grains, such as rice fortified with iron, folic acid, 
and vitamin B12, which can help address the problem of micronutrient deficiencies among the beneficiaries. Moreover, the NFSA should respect and support the regional, cultural, and dietary preferences of the beneficiaries, and encourage the cultivation and consumption of local and indigenous food systems and practices, such as millets, tubers, and forest foods, which are rich in nutrients and resilient to climate change. The NFSA is a landmark legislation that aims to eradicate hunger and malnutrition in India, and to realize the right to food for all. However, the NFSA also faces many challenges in its implementation, which require concerted efforts from the central and state governments, civil society, and the beneficiaries themselves. The NFSA is not just a scheme, but a social movement that calls for the participation and empowerment of the people, and the accountability and responsiveness of the authorities. The NFSA is not just a law, but a vision that seeks to transform India into a food-secure nation and a welfare state. The NFSA 2013 is a commendable initiative that aims to ensure food and nutritional security for the poor and vulnerable sections of the society in India. However, it also faces several challenges and limitations that need to be addressed to make it more effective and efficient. The suggestions given above are not exhaustive, but indicative of some of the possible ways forward to overcome the challenges and limitations of the NFSA 2013. They require the concerted efforts and cooperation of the central and state governments, the civil society organizations, the private sector, the farmers and the beneficiaries, as well as the support and guidance of the international organizations, such as the United Nations World Food Programme WFP, the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, and the World Health Organization WHO. By implementing these suggestions, India can achieve the goal of zero hunger by 2030, as envisaged by the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, and ensure the right to food and nutrition for all its citizens. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to our channel for more such informative and engaging content.